to God. Number 12, worship. As we break open this topic of worship, this is, and I can say this about all of the topics here in the 50, but it is one of the most amazing understandings. It's one of these gatekeeper understandings, one of these foundation stones that opens the door into other things. And once you understand that God has made you his child, you are a son, a daughter of God. You've been born again into the kingdom. You have his own righteousness. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. That he has actually given authority to the body of Christ and he expects us to walk in that authority. He expects us to do with what he has given us. The tools, the authority, the wisdom, the word, the gospel to take this to the nations. He expects us to do with what he's given us. And he will ask us about these things when he sees us face to face. And you will give an account, and I will give an account of how faithful we were in these things. So one of the most profound understandings is who you are in Christ and your position in God. And worship sets that in stone in our lives. And it's one of the jumping off points into the future of what God has for us. And it's a profound thing. Let me just introduce it uh, by saying to you that it is all about position. Yes, it is to humble oneself. It is to bow down all that one is before God. It is to honor. In this society, there is a profound lack of honor. Some societies in the world still have honor. But this society, it is very scriptural in that it has self-destructed because it is rebellious. It has given itself over to killing its parents, killing its authorities, destroying all those things that were once held dear and that God could bless a society with. Now they have become lovers of themselves and they've worshipped idols. And when we talk about worship, man, if those that worship idols worship devils. And whatever you worship, and if it's mammon or fame or celebrity, whatever you worship, that thing bleeds into you and you want to become like it and you do become like it. And it's uh, a cancer for some. But when you worship God, that's where your strength comes from. When you're in that secret place of the Most High, you are overshadowed by the power of the Almighty. So we spend time in our worship. We spend time in the presence of God so that we become like Him. But where people have missed it is they have not abased themselves. They have not positioned themselves underneath the mighty hand of God that he may exalt them in due season. And that's why there's no authority. That's why there's no power in the church. That's why. That is one of the main reasons why. And we're going to talk about this later when we talk about giving your life and laying down your life and the power of that in, in every single aspect of your life. The fruit of the Spirit. You would think the fruit of the Spirit is some meteoric rise of what the Pharisees and Sadducees thought the Messiah was going to be like. He was a military leader. He was going to cut down the enemy. That's not where the power is. The power is in, love, in, in the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and kindness and goodness and all of these really sweet things. And God says, against these things, there is no law. There is no law in the universe that can be enacted that can counter the power and the glory and the effects of these meek tools that God has given us. So when you humble yourself before Almighty God, there is glory of God that comes into your life and that cannot be overwhelmed and cannot be undone by demonic forces. Now, it's all about the position. What you worship, you will draw your strength from. So, we don't honor God with our lips and our hearts far from Him. We obey with our whole lives. The Holy Spirit, it is a spiritual act. We... Uh, 
John 4, 24, God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit. Now, I know that worship, you know, it's a daily thing. It's something we live out. It's something we give our whole lives to. Uh, but it is primarily, primarily spiritual. It is primarily internal. And I know we get in, into church and people dance around and they've got their flags and they've got their, their dresses and they've got all this stuff. And that's nice on the outside and that's sweet, but you'll understand that all of that can be done without any worship. All of that can be done without a single bit of worship in your heart. God doesn't look at the outward signs. He looks at the inward. He looks at what's going on in the heart. And so keep it real on the inside. And the outside, you don't really need that much. It's not a sin. It's not terrible. God doesn't say, no, don't do that, because there's scriptural evidence and precedent for prostrating yourself before the Lord, giving offerings in worship, uh, speaking and singing and dancing and, and showing outward love and worship and celebration for the Almighty. And, and we do this. And it's not, it's not a bad thing. But it has to, if it's not inside, then the outside is, is, is useless. As I've grown as, as a believer, the inside has become more and more intense. Inside, I'm kicking down the furniture. I'm shouting to the, to the heavens. I am having a, a great time, but nobody on the outside knows because it's, it's, it's inside. Now, I do dance, but you may never see me. The benefits of worship, fullness of joy. It is a place of the presence of God. It assists the believer in discontinuing unfruitful works. When we are Christians, we have such a desire to, to please God. We should anyway. We des desire to, to leave sin. We should anyway. But finding exactly what pleases God, finding what to do, is sometimes difficult. We hear teachings, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. This is what I do, this is what they do. And God never told us that we're supposed to do what this guy did and what that guy did. Sure, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But Jesus said, I do what I see my Father do. And we need to do what we see our Father do in worship. And this gets very clear later on as we break into more of this. But that place of worship is a place where God Almighty is showing you Himself. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. You need to see these things. In the face of Jesus Christ, the glory of the Lord, as you spend time looking into His face, you are changed into that same image as you worship Him. As you worship Him. As you see him changing you overwhelmed by his presence now there are things not to do in worship things to stay away from worshiping for show worshiping with erroneous teaching worth worshiping with hearts far from god worshiping in vain due to a greedy heart all of these things you'll have to check out in the notes and it cannot be overstressed the joy that worship brings to the heart of God. God seeks for worshipers, not because he's an egomaniac, but because he wants you to position yourself for blessing, for joy, for power, for the future of what he has for you in this life. Worship and be positioned by God. Have revelation knowledge burst forth in your life and be blessed, blessed, blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.